frankincense is from the Boswellia tree uh, in Canaan. It was burnt to the Canaan, Canaanite god Baal. It was burnt to the Babylonian god. It was burnt to the Egyptian god Ra like 6,000 6, years ago. This trade, frankincense is the original international commodity. The city of Petra was built on the wealth of it. And what is it? Well, <clears throat> chemically, it's a GABA receptor agonist. It works on the GABA system, the same system that Valium works on, diazepam. Uh, it works in a slightly in a very different way to the diazepam. Uh, it's absolutely delicious. GABA, your GABA cells are one of the cells in your brain, and they make up 40% of the cells in your brain. It's an inhibitory system. That means it calms you down, brings you down. And uh, every cell in your brain is either a GABAergic cell, working with a GABA neurotransmitter, or it is a, um, or it's next to one. So it's a, a very widespread uh, cell. Um, it's also a dopamine reuptake inhibitor, which is interesting. It increases the amount of dopamine in the synaptic cleft, which basically means there's more dopamine going on in your brain. The dopamine system is involved in things like reward pathways. It's involved in language production, creativity, uh, which we're going to come back to in a moment. Uh, it's classed as an anxiolytic and antidepressant. I don't want us to, to get too wrapped up in these terms, which come from the lunatic asylums and the poor houses of history. Uh, what the um, Israelites used it for was prophecy, right? The, all of these things were used for prophecy. I'm not going to talk about the trip B3 Iron Channel because it's... Uh, well, I will say that it's connected to um, migraine with aura and epilepsy with aura. So before you have an epileptic fit, or before you have migraine, certain types of migraine, people will feel presences, they will see lights moving around, they'll feel terror, they'll feel uh, elation, they'll smell things, they'll have deja vu, they'll see into the future, they'll think they'll see into the future. All of these things are also found in the stories of the prophets um, in the Bible. All right, so there seems to be a connection, I believe, between that state and uh, the prophetic state. And uh, this stuff, frankincense, works particularly on that iron channel in the brain. Now, no one ever learnt about drugs by listening to me talk about them. <laughs> However, <laughs> I've got some high-grade uh, frankincense. Uh, I'm going to pass it around. This is yellow frankincense. It was sponsored by uh, the frankincense store. And um, uh, that's about your dose, right? That's a big dose. So uh, the size of about two garden peas is the right amount. If you chew it up, it'll get really chewy. This is a lovely chewing gum, and it works when you are. Gabba system. So please take one. You don't, have to, you don't have to take one. I'm not going to push drugs on you. Um, <laughs> but, you know, pass it around and uh, send it around, please. Um, it will chew and keep, keep chewing it. It's lovely. Um, yeah, if you take like six, it might start to offend the flora in your, in your belly. So be careful with that. Um, all right, next one. Um, <laughs> this frankincense is brought to you by the frankincense store in London. Um, yeah, frankincense is involved in language production. I can see it's working. Uh, myrrh, right? Um, so let's talk about myrrh. Uh, myrrh comes from the Comifora plant. It is called nataf in Hebrew, which means prophecy. It also means distill, which is an interesting thing. Prophecy is a kind of distilled wisdom of the moment. And uh, it, it, it also, like, like the grain or the, the tear of myrrh, which comes off the tree, is also the distilled uh, kind of power and juice of the tree as well. So Hebrew is a fantastic language, basically. Anyway, it's got loads of opioid receptor agonists in it. These um, sesquiterpenoids works on the same system as opium and heroin. And uh, don't worry, I've got some of that for you as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of those has 10% the... Uh, Pain-killing power of uh, morphine, for example. Myrrh was given to Christ on the cross, and he refused. So don't feel you have to do that. Um, if anyone's into cannabis um, pharmacology, you might recognize uh, some or all of these from different cannabis strains. Uh, LMSN is a really interesting one. They're all in myrrh. Myrrh is still used in tribal situations. Put it in wine, it's great. Um, don't have too much to make you go to sleep. Um, Saffron, eugenol, LMSN are chemically similar to MDMA and mescaline. Uh, remember LMSN, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Now, in modern pharmacology, uh, pharmacologists like to separate what they call the active ingredient from a, um, from a, uh, a tree or a plant or something like that. And that's not how things were done back in the day. What, what the Persian, Egyptian, uh, Israelite, Chinese, all of these kind of medical systems would mix different plants together and make them do 
things in synergy. And the synergies with this stuff is super, super interesting. So for example, if you combine frankincense and myrrh and leave it overnight, um, then the chemicals change. Um, and it produces more opioid receptor agonists, and it also becomes more powerful at treating cancer. I'm just uh, combining these uh, uh, myrrh and frankincense in the room now. Isn't that interesting? They knew about these. Benjamin Shaman priest knew this. Knew about this like thousands and thousands of years ago. Um, these are the novel compounds which are produced if you mix these two things together. <laughs> Round two. Um, uh, the anointing oil is another really interesting synergy. 